what up what up welcome back to the channel i'm Modi J, and we are locked in this is episode three of grand crew man noah he's having a tough time his girlfriend she left him they've been jumping bars to bars but we've seen at the end of episode two he came up on a young lady named faye found her id but it turns out she'd rather be cool with his sister than with noah so for noah it's going to be tough having her hanging around when you're really attracted to her but before we get into this episode shout out to the notification gang if you're new to the channel you'll be a part of it hit the subscribe button turn on your notification bell so you get something every time i upload hit that like button it's the easiest thing you can do now noah has something to deal with the crew sherm they all didn't, they found a new bar they gave noah strict rules and now noah is trying to figure out man I need to get back in a relationship. Should I do it? You know his sister Nikki is like, don't do it, Noah. Mm-mm, don't do it. So let's jump into it. This is episode three, A Grand Crew. You remember Wyatt and Anthony were trying to get Sherm to cry because they watched the Paddington thing. Sherm walked in on the room and them crying and they were naked in the bathroom, but they end up squashing all that. They got him a new pair of shoes and everything is good. Now Wyatt wants to know, would Sherm rather fight one bear or 20 badgers? In the words of the, the poet Mystical, if you see me in the jungle fighting the bear, help the bear. Because I'm taking on all those badgers. <laughs> the crew is back together and they're talking about professionals leaving the place that they work at in their uniform. Now, I used to be in the military. As soon as I got off work, oh, I was switching clothes. I wasn't walking around anywhere with my uniform on. One, because they can identify me. I had my last name on it. But they're talking about judges leaving work with their robe on. I've never seen that. <laughs> now, Nikki, she's over here talking to Faye. And she's like, it seems like I've known you, but we just met. And Faye is, hey, I took a job here. I was also a giraffe. I didn't ever wear my costume on a date. But you remember the rules? No one can't date anybody within a 10-mile radius. <laughs> well, Faye works here. So I think that would make Faye off of mm-hmm off of the list brother anthony shows up and he has a suit on because he just got promoted to the vice president of accounting everybody like, oh, okay king tut now tut is t-u-t -T for turn up tony that's what they used to call him in college whenever he aced an exam so he's talking about hey we gonna go out tonight we gonna celebrate we gonna party noah said all right i'm gonna go you we know that Nikki told him to go on a self-care tour. So he says, I'm going to go get my hair did. I'm going to call it self-hair. Everybody's looking at him like, eh, don't, don't call it that. They all get an emergency text. And it was basically saying that there's a wildfire on the loose. And it's kind of messing up everything. So now they need to figure out where they're going to go to have this party for King Tut. Turn up a little bit. Now, Wyatt, he actually takes him to the, his house. And he says, you guys can stay the night here also. You hear Faye saying, shouldn't we wonder why these wildfires pop up so often? Everybody's looking around like, man, uh, the scientists are figuring that out. I mean, that's how I live. I'm out in California to pop up. Cancel that emergency alert. All right, I stay away from the fire. But life goes on. You know Sherman's going to tell it exactly how it is. So he's saying, Wyatt, no disrespect, but it's cool. Your wife is the breadwinner. And you know why? He says, look, she may bring home the bacon, but I cook it. She may bring home the bread, but I make the sandwiches. She may bring home the limes. And then his wife comes in talking about margaritas, anybody? So we know he don't make the drinks. And I, I'd rather get the drinks from her anyway. <laughs> Gold all of my chain. Gold all of my watch. Noah came in with the relaxed hair. They like, is that because the fire happened? They couldn't finish it? He said, nah, man, I've been reading the book. The three books is in or some crap like that. And I'm more relaxed in my hair. Everybody's looking. Uh, okay. Now, why is talking about anybody want tea, drinks, juice, or anything? His wife's like, let's get some shots in here. We celebrating. That's what we doing. Now, why is wife? She getting it crack and we got shots. Everybody's like, oh, thank you. You so dope for hosting. You hear Wyatt doing this fake laugh because he's looking at it. Hey, y'all my friends. Why are y'all on her side? Why are y'all taking up for her? Her margaritas are good. She want to have shots. Uh, babe, come talk to me in the other room. You already knew where Wyatt was going in there. Hey, babe, uh, these are my friends. I, I'm the host. I do this. I've been doing this since I was born. She said, oh, well, if you're so good, let's find out. So it's about to be a little competition. And we already know why it's probably going to lose. But her... She seems like she's a good wife. So what she's going to do is probably let Wyatt win in the long run. But she's going to be smoking them in the beginning. We have a hosting competition. Now they come out and let everybody know exactly what's about to go on. Winner takes all. Loser has to do that thing that the other person likes in the bedroom. You hear Anthony talking about. We didn't need to know all that. Wyatt said, uh, yes, you did. Because this is serious and the stakes are high. 
Now they're talking about what event would you want to go to? Do you want to go to Wyatt's event or do you want to go to his wife's event? And everybody like, man, she's giving us Brazilian food. That sounds like a better thing. Now Wyatt, he's taking it to a whole nother level talking about, hey, uh, Faye, you said you need your clothes washed? I'll do those. Man, that's not being a host. That right there is being a maid. <laughs> but when he gets in here, they're like, hey, if you don't know how to work this laundry, you know what I'm saying, the washing machine, why'd you volunteer? He said, man, I am trying to win, and we're going to figure this out one way or another. Wyatt's wife is out here reading the room. You see King Tut got on the blue, the sky blue, okay. And she's saying, you should invite the judge over so you can see her outside the robe. They're all like, damn, that, that's a smart idea. And plus, she's going to lay some things out to make it more comfortable for her. And then, hey, we can make it happen. Now, Wyatt hears all this. He's talking about, hey, I got five air mattresses for everybody. And his wife gets on him talking about, that's because you ordered 11. He said, hey, don't worry about that. The quantity button is a tricky thing. Sometimes you press up, it'll give you two or three. I just need one. But he has an air mattress for everybody. Now I see why Wyatt ordered 11 and didn't turn them back in because these air mattresses didn't cost that much if they got the regular pump that you got to manually do. The air mattress I got in the living room, it's a queen size. It has the automatic, you turn to the right, press the power button and it blows up by itself. I'm not doing no manual air mattress. Everybody else in the living room, they partying, they got Joe Button pump it up, playing in the background. Everybody in here, they got drinks going. I'm gonna go ahead and head in the living room. It looks like it's about three, four in the afternoon. He over here pumping up air mattresses. We don't need to worry about that till later on tonight. What, we having a sleepover? Faye speaks German, so she operated this washer and dryer. Now this washer and dryer came with a tablet. So that right there already tells me it's too advanced. Now I had a German washer and dryer when I lived over there and you had to remove the water from the dryer whenever it got done. Now, they didn't understand what was going on in the <laughs> And the machine started talking to him and giving orders. She started pressing button. It started smoking up. She trying to fan it off. Now, I'm not that good at German or the language of Deutsch. I could say, uh, guten Tag, good morning, wie get, nein, not that much. But they didn't caught this damn dryer on fire. King Tut, turn up Tony, then came in with his second outfit change talking about I'm an accountant that landed in Costa Rica. Now, I was just in Costa Rica, lovely place. Now, they're celebrating. They're going to pop some champagne. And he's saying, look, y'all, look at the website. I'm on here. He's the VP. But when he gets on there, it says he's on his own page, not the main page. And this page is celebrating diversity. Now, that means they only promoted him because he's black. Well, I would still take that. I'm still a VP. I'm still getting that pay. Hey, I just had to be that diversified black brother, but pay me. Celebrating diversity. JMP cares. Hey, it is what it is. We know how it is in the workforce. Hell, like I said, pay me. Now, this is a serious moment, and everyone's like, damn, that is kind of messed up. They put you on a diversity one. You hear Sherm talking about celebrate these nuts. Everybody looking like, my bad, y'all. I, I, I was tripping. Judge Eva shows up with her robe on and Sherman's looking at her like, oh, are you just coming from work? She said no. So in fact, she does wear that robe outside of work. He introduces her to everybody and says, as you can see, she's just coming from home because they had that big debate on do you wear your uniform outside of work? Sherm is telling Wyatt, hey, you and your wife, this little competition seems a little weird, like it's too real. And Wyatt says, no, that's what me and my wife do. We're fun and we compete. Now, that's their personal thing. But he's saying, remember, your dinner didn't come from the Brazilian place because of my wife. And Sherm's like, yeah, the hell with all that. I am hungry. Wyatt says, Kristen, get in here. We're going to have a competition. 30 minutes on the clock. We can see who cooked the best dinner for our guest. She's like, OK, that's what we're going to do. Top chef, quick chef. He sets a timer on Alexa, 30 minutes. Let's get it. Okay, she takes it up a notch. She tells it, uh, I'm not going to say the word because it'll make mine go well. She tells it to go ahead and remove 10 minutes off of the clock because that's all I need is 20 minutes to go ahead and destroy my husband. The washing machine is towed up. Faye's talking about she lost all her friends in the divorce that she was in. She doesn't want to be known as Washing Machine Faye because she's the new one to the crew. Now, Washing Machine Faye, uh, okay, that's something we can build off of. We got to make it a little bit shorter. Washing Machine Faye doesn't really roll off the tongue like that. But you know how it is when you're in the crew. You want to make the best first impression and you mess this up. But Nikki's like, don't worry about it. 
And then we look at it like, damn, Faye, you sweating a little, a little bit too much. But we're going to get our handyman over here and we're going to make this work. At this point, Wyatt doesn't care, especially trying to be the best host. He'll say, oh, don't, don't worry about that washing machine. We'll figure that out later. Come have a drink. Come have this dinner. <laughs> Cause he's trying to win that competition. Now, Nikki and Faye, they're trying to distract everybody from the washing machine till the handyman comes over, but no one's really having a good time right now. We got the Wyatt and his wife. They doing a little challenge. King Tut ain't King Tut no more because he's on a diversity page. Sure, I'm talking about it. it is a little hot in here. That might be why Faye is sweating. I'm gonna take my jean jacket off. Does anyone else want me to remove some layers? Trying to get the judge to take that robe off. Both of the chefs present their meals to everybody. Look at King Tut over there with a whole bottle. Now, remember, they only had 20 minutes for this. Me personally, they made two big dishes. I'm not going to be able to eat all of this. So I'm probably going to take the sheared chicken. And then I'm, mm, yeah, sheared chicken and some wine. That's all I'm going to eat. I'm going to be honest with you. What do we know about Sherm? He's going to tell it like it is. And they're like, so how are the meal? He says, let me be honest with you. It is trash. Why is like, what did you try mine? He said, yeah, it was also trash. 20 minutes is not enough time to create the meal that you guys thought you wanted to make. So this whole night, this whole turn up night and celebrating, it's been going downhill. King Tut, I mean, King Butt talking about, I'm vegan, so I didn't even try it. Nikki's over there faking it. Like, oh, it's amazing. Faye still sweating, talking about, oh yeah, it's because of the spices in here. Wyatt says, man, there ain't no spices in this. Let's see what Noah's got to say. Nikki ends up taking the blame for the washing machine. And this is to make Faye feel comfortable because that's why she was sweating. Now, you remember she texts the handyman to show up. So Christy, she's looking at Wyatt like, yeah, thanks a lot, host. You broke my new washing machine. And he's like, well, there's a maintenance man here. Turns out Nikki texts the wrong one and it's a stripper. He's talking about, but first, let me find my tools. He starts stripping. Everybody's like, oh, man, here we go. Out of nowhere, they hear loud noise and damn, this damn washing machine and over flooded. It soaps all the way down the stairs. Yeah, it's going to be a long night cleaning this up. Cause you know anything about suds? They don't just go away like that. You could push them down. You can have to put water on it. And I don't know how you're going to do this unless you sweep all of it outside. That's the only way you're going to be able to get rid of something as big as this. King Butt sitting down in the sud. Noah's trying to talk to him to get him out of there. We got the, the husband and wife arguing over bougie appliance and trying to work the washing machine and not knowing how. And then we got Nikki. She covering up for Faye, but they figured it out. Now, Judge, she steps up. She has a gavel. And she starts telling them that I've never seen this much tomfoolery in a group of friends. And the reason she wears the robe is because she's proud of who she is and what she's done. She's the first in her family to go to college, the first to be a judge. So that's why she has the robe on at all times. But she did just give them all a message. Enjoy who you are. Love that and embrace it. They even messed up Noah's hair in the suds. And the judge told Noah his hair was bad. And what does Noah say? She was harsh, but fair. That's what you always want to hear about a judge. The crew ends up ordering pizza and they having that sleepover. Thanks to Wyatt, we got all the beds pumped up. Now everybody, they're starting to apologize to each other and come to an understanding. Nikki and Faye, they're getting closer and she's telling her, yeah, I got strippers saved in my phone. Multiple. So they're getting closer, but Faye is also saying, thank you for taking the blame for me. She's covering for her and that's what friends would do. Sherman and Anthony, they're talking about how Anthony recovered from being King Butt and going back to King Tut, he called his boss and asked him, why is all the officers white on that page? Which moved him on there. And then he realized what the judge told him is, enjoy who you are. Embrace yourself. Love yourself. And he's like, I'm good at what I do. And that's what I was saying. They could put me on the diversity page, but I know I do a good job and y'all got to pay me. Wyatt and his wife, they're talking to each other. And you hear Sherm talking about, hey, y'all got to remember, it's a small room. Keep it down a little bit. Now, Wyatt is saying, I appreciate, you know, you being the provider. I did feel a little, you know, saying just a little bit against it, but I do love that you work and we make things happen. Now, on the other hand, she's saying, I did kind of feel bad also because I wasn't able to do things around the house. Now, Sherm, he over there talking about, oh, can y'all speak a little bit louder? I didn't expect that. Christy, she did win being the best host. So they're like, all right, I got it. So Wyatt wanted to end the night. 
But in the middle of the night, you hear someone say, uh, I'm not tired. Everybody's like, yeah, it'd be either. So they wake up and they turn up. Even Jerry Pipe, he stayed the night. They were like, oh, no, thank you for coming over, Jerry. So they go in the living room. Hey, we got the suds. We might as well have a phone party. Let's get it. There you go. Episode three of Grand Crew. Now, I haven't had a crew like that since I was stationed in Georgia. I think it was six dudes. It was six of us guys. And then we had four girls in our group. But that's what we would do on the weekends. We go grill. We all meet up at my boy G's house. <sighs> Good times. But let me know a story about you and your crew below. I'm ODIJ. If you like the content on the channel, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. I'm out. Jimmy on a beat, boy.